I need new music. This is the JJO Discover New Music Podcast. Very excited joining me uh, to talk brand new music from Alter Bridge. The man with golden pipes, Miles Kennedy from Alter Bridge. Miles, how are you, man? I'm wonderful. It's great to be here with you. Brand new album uh, from Alter Bridge, Pawns and Kings. So here we are coming up on 19 years uh, of Alter Bridge. Seventh studio album from the band. You guys are seasoned veterans at this point. I mean, there's really nothing you have to prove. Done this multiple times over. How'd you guys find new ways to maybe challenge yourself with the new Alter Bridge and Pawns and Kings? Well, that's the million dollar question, right? At this point, um, after you've made seven records together, I mean, what do you, what do you do? Um, I, I think for us, it's just a matter of, you know, the songs are paramount, you know, as someone, as a, as an a guy once told me a long time ago, he says, you're not in the music business, you're in the songwriting business. And, and he's, he has a, a, a had a good point. Um, so we, we make sure that, that the, that the material is, is, is strong. When we go into something and then, yeah, as far as mixing it up from record to record, um, I think the philosophy that we had going into this was less is more, you know, we've made records where the production goes to, you, know, you kind of take the production value up to a certain certain height and uh, you establish that uh, you know, sonic fury and and with this record what we wanted to do was strip you know pull it back a little bit from a production standpoint not as many layers don't incorporate all of the elements of you know as much as multi-tracking is an awesome tool you can kind of overdo it when you get in the studio and well let's try this part here let's try this part and before you know it you know it's like you've got a hundred plus tracks of, yeah of layers and layers yeah. and layers on there yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so that was the that was the mo going into this was to kind of keep that keep the reins uh pulled in a little bit yeah uh pulling the reins back on that's like a couple of clydesdales respectively speaking <laughs> <laughs> well with me as a shetland pony so <laughs> oh, everyone likes the little ponies everyone likes exactly no going into the production obviously uh this is your fifth consecutive album uh with mike uh aka elvis uh as your producer what's the reasoning behind is that all part of the sound obviously he's a very talented producer but why is that so important for the sound that alter bridge is going for to keep that consistency with your producer I, I think for us, it's just because it's the relationship that works. We, you know, we discover that there's a real, I don't know, we're on the same page, you know, and there's a trust there. Um, and it's interesting. Like I was just, interestingly enough, listening to an interview from about 10 years ago this morning uh, with Tom York from Radiohead. And they're asking him why they always use Nigel as, as their producer um, with those Radiohead records. And I think he was using them on his solo albums as well. And he's just like, it's the same thing we feel where it's like, once you find somebody that you, that you really gel with and you trust, um, you know, if it ain't broke, don't, you know, don't fix it as they say. <laughs> and, and he, yeah, he's amazing. Elvis is, is, and he's funny. And he's so, yeah. and we, I'm a kind of a, a goofball. So I enjoy hanging out with him and it's really just a license to goof off for six weeks and make uh, a record in the process you can't beat that man jokes right? and music, they go hand in hand uh and and obviously yeah like you said with that that kind of uh, copacetic relationship that you have it, 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 yeah if it's not broke don't fix it you guys yeah. are here again now on the seventh album uh so you're doing something right obviously with elvis in there and what i like about this album and as i was kind of looking into it you did something that we have not seen yet and that is your longest track to date eight minutes it's 22 seconds fable of the silent sun i'm always intrigued by these long tracks did it start off like all right i want to write a long track or is it like here's a four minute track well let's add this let's the talk about that process and making this eight minute kind of epic if you will yeah well it's funny with epics you never go into it with at least i, I don't i don't know if mark does is uh, you know i don't know if you sit down and go okay i want to write an epic because it's a you're you're definitely setting yourself up for a lot of work so what, what happened with fable and silent sun is i was sitting in my studio for quite a while messing with a few different pieces before i presented them to the band and i had this this section that I thought was going to be an intro is like two minutes plus. And then I thought, well, I don't know where this is going. And then I had another 
piece. N- 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 I didn't have lyrics for either yet. They just kind of fragments. So I had, but I had these musical bodies put together or musical elements. And then I fused them together and I thought, okay, those work really well together. And now we're, now we're on to something. And then I developed a narrative from a lyrical standpoint. Then we got in the studio and we're doing pre-pro. Then Mark had a great idea for what would be like the solo section. So what started, what ended up when I brought it to the band, it was like seven minutes long already. And then Mark had an idea and then it became, you know, over eight minutes. So yeah. And, and it's funny because it wasn't something that we planned. It just turned out when, when, when we, f- it was funny because we were doing pre-production and Elvis was like, well, the song is like eight and a half minutes long now. And we're like, really? I mean, it didn't feel like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, well, it's super cool to see. And, and it's kind of, it's interesting to see that progression of the band and where we're at now with the seven album and now experimenting and having these long songs. And I mean, are we going to do maybe like a tool thing where you only have two songs on the album? They're both 15 minutes long on each side. Is that what it'll be? Or four songs total? Maybe one day we, we have flirted <laughs> with the idea of just doing in fact i think at one point we talked about it possibly being this record let's just do an album of all epics you know and then <laughs> and the label and management they're like uh we need a single somewhere you're not going to get radio to play an eight minute song <laughs> pull the iron butterfly like 30 minute in a god of vita right it'll be, it'll be fantastic <laughs> exactly maybe one day one day someday someday well we can't wait either way uh do you got a favorite track on the album so one maybe that really speaks to you uh you know, I probably fable the silent sun. I, I think not just because of the amount of work that went into it, but from a lyrical standpoint, because it's written from the perspective of a few of us, you know, kind of looking at the, it's the idea that we've been on the planet for a while now and kind of looking at life in the rearview mirror and the mistakes you've made along the way and trying to convey what you learn from those mistakes to someone younger so they don't have to go through the same hardship you did. So there's a, there's a personal element there. And I think it's something that our fans will, will relate to hopefully, but um, yeah, I like, I like that one. Uh, well, again, we are so excited. The brand new album Pawns and Kings, the seventh studio album from Alter Bridge. And I think a lot of people, can say that man miles has been spoiled with guitarists obviously Mm -hmm. uh, you've uh, been able to play with slash you still do having mark tremonti on there being a a seasoned guitarist yourself is there a point maybe as a lead man where you're like i gotta keep up with slash and mark tremonti like (laughs) a lot guys this is a lot even for me miles kennedy (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 been good. I think that um, when guitar players get together, you, you know, obviously there's kind of that um, friendly competition sort of thing. But 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 I think more than anything, it's you feed off one another and you learn from one another. And and that's what's been fascinating with with especially with Alter Bridge because we've been playing together for so long now. And so with Mark and I, when we bring ideas to the table now. Elvis, our producer, can't tell who brought what because we just kind of, you know, oh, it's wow. kind of become this, this thing. <laughs> yeah, which is great. And and so it's it's just like you learn and you and you evolve, which is really great. But you also just pick up people's work ethic, you know, like hanging out with Slash. He's he's incredibly devoted to what he does, as is Mark. You know, I think, you know, that's the thing. You you know this when you hang out, when you live on the wor- on the planet for a while, you discover people who excel at certain things. There's a reason because they put in that 10,000 hours, right? They're, they're devoted. And that's that's the thing that I've, I've picked up from being in this industry for a long time is generally the, the guys who are at a certain level, it's because they put in the time, which is which is really inspiring. Hey, this is Mark Tremonti. Discover new Alter Bridge now on JJO. Madison Solid Rock, 94.1 JJO. I'm Brock, and our guest for JJO Discover New Music is Miles Kennedy of Alter Bridge, and their new release, Pawns and Kings, is what we're highlighting this week on Discover New Music. Well, it's been fun talking new music, but I have a couple things I want to dive into that I haven't had a chance to chat with you uh, yet. And for people that don't know, you obviously have a long history of music, going back to playing trumpet and guitar in the high school jazz band, your... I believe it is a uh, it was a jazz fusion or an instrumental jazz fusion band. Uh, cosmic, what was that? Cosmic, cosmic dust. Cosmic dust. Okay, <laughs> so you got cosmic dust. You were also in a teen air guitar band. If that is true. Uh- <laughs> what was the name of that band? If you remember, this was back when you were 13, I believe. Yeah. 
Oh man, that's a good. You know what? No one's ever asked about, and that could be the most important of all the bands I played in. Was the it's you know the, began? It's, it's where it began the, the air band, and uh, so the air band <laughs> we put it together. Some friends, you know, in the in our family church, um, there was the few of us teenagers who were rebelling, oh, and uh, you know, of course, uh, and and so we put together this air band. But it was also it was a ton of fun. I mean, we just really got into it. We would build drum sets out of uh, Quaker oat boxes oh and, then, and then, you know, the t- tennis rackets. We graduated from tennis rackets. There was a gentleman in, a, in the church named Bud Smith who actually cut cut a cool guitar. Like mine was the basically the Randy Rhodes style Jackson. He, he made me, a, a you know, out of plywood, which was was brilliant. The name of the band, if I, if I remember correctly, I think at one point we were called Spider. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right. And we we drew our own tour shirts. We bought we bought just red shirts and then would draw spider webs on the shirts with felt you know felt tip marker you know this is the thing you do so we were loving all this right uh, and then I, we were put these shows together and then my my stepfather one day you know kind of looked at me dis- just with a, a certain level of disgust and just said son why don't you learn how to play for real and i was like that is genius dad and uh yeah the rest is history <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if we had tape of, of, of like VHS, maybe Ash, if you can find maybe in, in the family history books, some VHS tapes of spider performing uh, these air acts. My God, I want to see. That. I, well, there are still photos floating around, which yes. I, I might have to find. And they they are pretty. It's 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 pretty funny stuff. We uh, but yeah, we were kind of ostracized at one point in the church because there was a there was a there was this thing called the crop walk, which was a ten mile walk for charity. Mm-hmm. So at, at one of the parents thought it would be a great idea. Well, let's have the kids perform their air band <laughs> afterwards, and we're like, uh huh, oh, yeah, it's going to be a great idea, and we we open up we open up the little performance with shout at the devil oh beautiful of course <laughs> right of course. <laughs> right then into screaming for vengeance by judas priest i mean it was all we were just like going for it and we cleared the room out it was oh, it was, it was oh, so much fun bunch of old ladies having heart attacks you know totally <laughs> totally but to be fair shout at the devil is i guess it could be considered a religious song maybe yeah not like- it's not shout with the devil yeah. it's shout at the devil yeah you know? oh, so, oh my god um, uh, well thank you for sharing that and and <laughs> i can't wait to uh, see the old spider concert tease i think that's what we need to bring up uh one more final question as we take this walk down memory lane i know it's been quite some time since maybe you've done this or even thought about it but do you still have the costume from the movie Rockstar. And Mm -hmm. so do you ever belt out some steel dragon from time to time? I don't have the costume and I regret it because at the last day of the shoot, somebody said that I could, I could have purchased it for, I think a very, not a lot of money. And I was just like, no, I don't ever want to see that outfit. (laughs) And, but now I had no idea in in retrospect, I didn't know the 20 years later, we'd still be talking about that, that film. I certainly didn't think I'd still be in the, in the music industry after 20 years, but, but, uh, but yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, Do I do stand up and shout every once in a while? If I'm, if I'm, feeling it you know i'm good warmed up and and i'm i'm feeling the crowd i might just you know stand up and shout and the crowd <laughs> oh my god i love it i love yeah. it yeah there's a lot of, if you don't know what i'm talking about go rent uh amazon whatever rock star mark Wahlberg, jennifer aniston killer soundtrack and uh and miles is there at the end and he makes his uh so that's your only movie right that's your only movie. My, my own, my only movie. Yeah. That's uh that's the only film you'll see me in. Uh, <laughs> actors get up way too early. And <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're in that. And you made that cameo because now we can sit here and talk about it. Now, if you got time, could we do rapid fire and then I'll get you on your way again. Uh, 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 Miles Kennedy of Alter Bridge. We've been having fun talking about the new record pawns and Kings. Uh, no wrong answers on this miles. You just go okay. in your heart and <laughs> right. uh, we're going to learn a little more about you. All right. First thing, more, more guitar, more drums, or more bass in your monitor? Uh, m- more guitar. I like it. I, like it. I figured that from you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a cool Ranch or Nacho Cheese Doritos? Oh, Cool Ranch. Thank All you. the way. I was a little worried. When I asked that question, I feel like I, 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 some friendships could be ruined with the wrong answer on that one because <laughs> Cool Ranch is the right answer. It's so good. Bigfoot or El Chupacabra? Now, you're a Washington State guy, so you probably... 
Maybe you've even seen Bigfoot. I'm wearing my uh, oh, Woodbugger Bigfoot hat right now. I just noticed that. Yes. I think we didn't plan this at all, folks. It, that is that is completely serendipitous. <laughs> right? Or El Chupacabra. Uh, Bigfoot. I'm yeah. from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Uh, have you ever felt like you've come close to maybe seeing the elusive Bigfoot? <laughs> I, you know, lived in the woods for a while as a kid uh, in a little trailer home way out in the woods. And uh, I, I'm, I, I don't know if it was Bigfoot that I saw, but I, I definitely saw something <laughs> spooky. Something out there, that weird neighbor. That's what it was. Right. Uh, all right. You have to fight one. And I know you're a lover, not a fighter. But if you had to fight one, the entire cast of the Golden Girls circa 1988 with those little souvenir baseball bats or... Right. The entire cast of the Little Rascals with prison shanks. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Golden Girls because I'm not going to attack children with prison shank. You've heard it here, folks. He, uh, Miles Kennedy likes to fight old women. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the tag above this interview right there. I know that's a, that's a tough one, but still, that is a uh, tough one. It's brutal. A, good, good choice. Good choice. Uh, awesome. Thank you for humoring me, miles. Uh, you're, you're a rock star dude. And, and congratulations on the seventh album. Again, folks go get it. Alter bridge pawns and Kings. Thank you so much for the time. Miles. I really appreciate it. Thank you, it. brother. Brock's been a pleasure. This is the JJO discover new music podcast. Listen, rate, share, subscribe. Discover new music now at WJJO.com, in the JJO app, or wherever you get your podcasts. Brock has a new interview every Thursday evening between 6 and 7. 94.1 JJO.